Random thought of the day, what the heck happened to the transatlantic accent? Your intolerance infuriates me. It just disappeared after a certain time. Like, was it a made up voice for movie stars or did people in real life actually talk like that? Should I start talking like that? Funny business, a woman's career. I can't do anything right. And Bunny and I ran to the closet of the game room to get another ping pong ball, and the closet was locked. Imagine. The problem is, I always want to go into the that other version of that accent, which is the funny business, a woman's career. I'm Alex Clark, and this is Politics, and I cover pop culture news without the leftist propaganda. Thumbs up, please, and then subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Did you know that there is a new reality dating show that's not shallow with real, hardworking, <sighs> Decent men? Honey, you're about to lose your ever-loving mind. We have to talk about Farmer Wants a Wife. Another show that you've seen, even if you haven't seen it, is 1,000 Pound Sisters because the clips go viral constantly. Well, Miss Tammy has lost some major weight. I gotta show you the pictures. Colin Kaepernick is now accusing his adoptive white parents of racism. We absolutely must discuss the new Jared from Subway pedophile docuseries. And I have some questions to answer answer from you for pop quiz. Try being my size, Amy. You don't know how it is. There's stuff you can do. You want to be a big it. baby about everything. I ain't baby. You're the damn baby. Grow the up. You first. Bitch, I've been grown. I pay my bills. My bills are paid. <laughs> Listen up! If you're an ex-Bachelor fanatic like me who had to give up the show because it got woke and sucky, I have amazing news. Farmer wants a wife on Fox. Cute conservatives, our time has come. And yes, Jennifer freaking Nettles from Sugarland is the host. Have you ever dated a farmer? No, I've never dated a farmer before. This has real, authentic connections. People who are looking for lifelong partners, not just looking to become famous. It's hard to meet people when you don't leave the farm much. Hopefully, I find true love. What do we think of Oklahoma? It looks very abandoned. Finding true love for me, it's now I have a partner. Someone who not only do I have their back, but they've got mine. They will spend six weeks getting to know each other in this journey to find love. <laughs> she definitely got my attention. Oh, oh my gosh, there's two of them in my hand. She's a hoot, I'll say that. Oh. I get to meet more girls in one day than I've met in the last five years. Good morning, ladies. It's a little overwhelming having all the ladies at once. <laughs> it's a big adjustment. See? I love love. What's better than love? And I love real people who are out there doing the work. I'm not the type of girl that's going to fight and compete against other girls. I've got to go home. I don't want to beg you to stay. I, I want you to stay. This is a hell of a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. So what made you want to do this? At the end of the day, no matter how content you are by yourself, there's just still something missing. I'm super excited to get to be a part of this heartwarming adventure that brings people together in real romance. That date went smooth, it ended with a good kiss. You're not shy, so. You can't have your cake and eat it too. You can't date five girls at the same time. Mama's opinion, she's the one. What's my heart saying right now? Get Maria in back in there and keep dancing with that pretty girl. <laughs> I watched the premiere last Wednesday. So this Wednesday is only episode two, super easy to get caught up. It airs on Fox, but it is posted on Hulu the next day. And here's how I describe it. It is Yellowstone meets The Bachelor. And I counted three cutaways spotlighting the American flag in the first episode. The first time it happened, I thought, that's nice. But by the third time, I was like, oh, okay. We building the wall then, huh? Ah! Um, I thought of something funnier than whatever the clip is I have. On the way here, I was thinking about it, and I thought it would be funny to just have a bald eagle screech. <laughs> Let's go, baby! <laughs> Get this, two of the women are from Scottsdale. That's where I live. I could totally go for this. Oh, I'm going to go milk my cows with my bucket. But three problems. One, I don't like animals. Fool this man! <laughs> two, they're away from work for at least seven weeks. Now I suppose I could record my spillovers in advance, but that'd be a long time away. Definitely couldn't do politics. And three, I don't know if the farmers would appreciate my new organic lifestyle. This is, this is local? Yes, absolutely. I'm gonna ask you just one more time, and it's local. It is. 
Is that USDA organic or Oregon organic or Portland organic? It's just all across the board organic. The hazelnuts, these are local. Uh, how big is the area where the chickens are able to roam free? I'm sorry to interrupt. I have exactly the same question. Four acres. Give me just a second, I'll be right back, okay? Okay. On a serious note, here's what I think is really neat. Farmer Wants a Wife is the American spinoff from what in TV world is called the most successful dating show in the world. The original show is a program that began in Australia and the title over there is just marginally different. It's called The Farmer Wants a Wife. Oh, and it claims to have led to 180 marriages and 410 children. Now, multiple couples, not just one. Numbers The Bachelor could never dream of, frankly. That little pig. That'll do. Let's all watch this and then we can discuss it together. Fox and Hulu, you have homework. <laughs> Another guilty pleasure show is 1,000 Pound Sisters. If you aren't watching it, you actually are because the clips are viral all over the internet. I gotta be honest, I never bought really healthy food in the past, but this time I'm gonna buy some tomato, onion, avocados, cucumbers, lettuces. I'm gonna hit a lettuce. I had to bring up the show because one of the stars, Tammy, has revealed a dramatic weight loss, and I was shooketh by the pics. She got bariatric weight loss surgery last year, and it looks like it really paid off. Her eyebrows aren't covering her eyes anymore, and that sounds mean, but it's just, it's not. It's like a reality. I can't even believe it. I don't think I would even recognize her now on the street. Is this healthy? No, but the show is good. Since we decided to have the surgery, we're gonna have to eat better and quit eating a lot. We gotta learn some good recipes. Bye-bye, Slappa Joe. Speaking of reality shows, I would like to propose a reality show idea. We'll call it Celebrity Cry Off. Two of the richest and most privileged celebs try to spend one night without crying victim. The first competitors, Colin Kaepernick and Prince Harry. My penis was oscillating between extremely sensitive and borderline traumatized. Colin Kaepernick is the focus today, though, because he is now accusing his white adoptive parents of perpetuating racism. In his new graphic novel, by the way, losers write graphic novels. It's called Change the Game, and in it he said, I know my parents loved me, but there were still very problematic things that I went through. It was important to show that no, this can happen in your own home and how we move forward collectively while addressing the racism that is being perpetuated. I guess they told him once that they preferred his hair a certain way. It's like having a little sh of a child that doesn't appreciate anything. Jeez, you know, I'm just thinking about how many of my white friends were told they couldn't shave their hair into a mohawk or dye it blue or cut it all off. Not to mention black parents in the 60s and 70s who objected to their black kids' request for an afro. It's almost like all parents are the same. When you're a TV star, your hair has to be just right. <laughs> how many ways can there be to fix hair? She's dried everything but an afro. Well, if she keeps this up, she won't have to worry about her hair in the TV. She'll be bald. It's a hard toss up to decide who's a worse person between Prince Harry and Colin Kaepernick. Maybe Prince Harry can be the worst on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, and then Colin can be the worst on the other days. I remember clear as day, the height of Jared from Subway stardom. Do you? For years, I ate fried food and burgers that looked like this. And I looked like this. Then I found Subway restaurants. And I realized I could enjoy lots of great tasting food without lots of fat. This dude was like the Taylor Swift of fast food. It was insane. I mean, people lining up in Times Square to meet him and get a picture and an autograph and all these young girls being like, we love Jared. I mean, it was so weird. He ended up being worth $15 million. Remember Jared from Subway? He's inspired a lot of people. He's looking good. So I remember exactly where I was in 2015 when it came out that he was a pedophile. What if they put a camera in your kid's room? Would they feel good now? Yeah. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Would you rather have in your son or your daughter's room? Oh, I don't know. That would be, you know. Which one do you think would be better? I don't know. 
There's a new docu-series on Discovery Plus called Jared from Subway Catching a Monster. It is horrifying, but also interesting because I had no idea this is how he all got caught. But there was this radio chick who interviewed him and she kind of had this feeling that he was a pedophile based on some things he had said. They were like getting ready for an interview and then right before the camera started rolling, he leans over and whispers in her ear and he's like, you know who's hot? Middle schoolers. So she was like, you know, WTF, um, she spends the next few years working with the FBI to befriend him and record him. Ultimately, they create a sting that leads to his arrest. And what's really sad is that she was a mom herself of two, and it basically just destroyed her life because she had to pretend to be into, I mean, basically child porn and stuff so that she could help the FBI get him. And she was having phone conversations with him multiple times a day, every single day. And they would have to go into all these sexual conversations about children so that she could gain his trust. And he felt like she was one of, you know, one of him. They had that in common. And then every single phone call at the end, no matter what time of day it was, even if it was four in the morning, she would have to leave her house and take the recordings to the FBI. And so it was like she was never home. It totally messed up her relationship with her own kids, but highly recommend binging this. It is so well done and just a crazy rise and fall of someone who achieves such an insane level of fame only to completely crash and burn and basically just be someone that no one thought he was. Jared Fogel went from a nobody to a somebody. He became an icon. He helps children all around the world. He's someone you could look up to. As a journalist, I came to know Jared Fogel better than anyone. There were cameras all throughout the house. I had evidence of Jared saying what he wanted to do. He was an active pedophile. I didn't know where it would lead me. I just wanted to find out the truth. Rochelle said, Jared from Subway wants to see pictures of my kids naked. And if I don't, he's gonna kill me. He needed to be stopped. That's when I became an undercover asset for the FBI. I love answering questions every week directly from you. You can send me those through the link on the Politics bio on Instagram. This is what we call pop quiz. Mary from Washington asked, if you were going to get a tattoo, what would it be? Hot take, not on a Tuesday, but I won't get any tattoos because I didn't know this, but like as soon as you get them, your body starts trying to get rid of them because it's a foreign object on your skin. And your skin is one of the most absorbent parts of your body, so I'll be skipping that. Tanaya from Illinois wants to know, do you have any leadership advice for college students who start a TPUSA chapter on campus? I'm excited since I'll be the leader. Congrats. Order some free activism kits from TPUSA. We have some really cute politics ones that came out in December of last year. And then also in a couple weeks, we have a new one coming out very soon for YWS. And those are so helpful and fun to have as materials to give out when you're tabling. Also, I always recommend come to TPUSA events because you're gonna meet other student leaders that you can problem solve with. You guys can brainstorm ideas on best practices to grow your chapter. And then also just networking with other young conservatives. Leah from California asked Alex, what is your favorite TikTok account at the moment. Oh, this is easy. Jasper the doll. Guys, I think yeah. I have it. What? What are you doing? I'm making a video. Okay, that's awesome, but I need you to clean your room. Now, please. But I... You just got like three solid show recommendations for me, so no one better say that they are bored this week. Plus, you have got our longest spillover episode yet with Dr. Courtney Kayla on all things crunchy and non-toxic. It is an hour and a half long. That means if you have a 30 minute commute, you can listen to it in three drives. Math. Thumbs up this video, debate who's worse and why, Colin Kaepernick or Prince Harry. Do you remember if you were shocked when it came out that Jared the Subway Guy was a pedophile? Have you watched Farmer wants a wife yet, or will you at least commit to trying it, please, please? Turn on the notification bell so that you know when episodes come out, and please make sure that you are actually subscribed to this channel and tell everyone you know to make a YouTube account and subscribe too. What are you waiting for, huh? FYI, a little housekeeping note and reminder, the 50% off YWS tickets is only available till the end of March. So get those now because tickets will start getting more and more expensive as we get closer to the event in June. Go to tpusa.com slash YWS and use code EARLYBIRD. I will see you back here same time tomorrow at 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific. It's pop culture without the propaganda Monday through Thursday. I'm Alex Clark and this is Pop Politics.